Have you ever noticed that as you get older, life seems to move quicker and quicker? That each year is worth less than the one before? I have. I spend a lot of time thinking about it, actually. Despairing over it. Back when I first noticed this phenomenon, I wanted to find out why it happened. It seemed like the clear answer was due to the proportionality of time and human thought arrangement. In your first year of life, that one year is all you've known. Your second year is equal to half of your total life experience, and your third year is equal to one third. Each passing year represents a smaller and smaller fraction of your total life, so it seems reasonable to assume that this is the driving factor in your life feeling quicker and quicker. But this doesn't actually make as much sense as you'd hope once you think about it and do the math and factor in all the disruptions to the equation. For instance, your 83rd year is Quick, sure, but not ten times quicker than your tenth year. And what about sleep? And years you don't remember? My point is, this isn't it. It's something else. Something far more sinister. But luckily, it's something you can actually do something about. It has to do with novelty and the way your brain stores unique memories. I was able to finally put a word to this phenomenon from an amazing Tumblr blog, The Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. Really, this blog alone justifies Tumblr's existence. It was years back that I found this, and I immediately became obsessed with it. I was always more interested in words than the average person, and this was a blog dedicated to made-up words to describe real-world emotions and feelings that don't already have a name. For instance, Sonder. The realization that every passerby you see has a life as full and rich and interesting as your own. It can be easy to think of strangers as extras in the movie that is your life, that they just disappear the moment they go off stage, but to them, you are the extra in their movie. This has serious implications for relationships and love. Basically, loving someone is just choosing to invest your life in them. It's getting to know someone better than anyone else you know. People often say things about their loved ones like, he's the smartest person I've ever met, or there's no one in the world like him, and they actually believe it. This is why people believe in soulmates. But the truth is, you only think these things because you put in the effort to get to know the person so well. If you did the same with someone else, you'd fall in love with them too. You only think someone is the smartest person in the world because you don't know very many people. Once the feeling of Sonder truly hits you, you realize there's actually nothing special about the person you love. Of all the random passerby, it just so happens that you chose this one. Now, that's not entirely true, because there are some people that are just universally hateable. So perhaps maybe not every single person in existence could be your soulmate, but probably a good 70% of them. So you can see why I love the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. There's nothing but deep and meaningful stuff there. But anyway, the word I found that really did change the way I see life and time and memory that I've been cursing nearly every day for five years now is Olika. Olika is the awareness of how few days in your life are memorable. Olika is essentially your brain's storage filter, or at least your acknowledgement of it. It may be a made-up word, but it's not a made-up phenomenon. And, I mean, after all, don't all words start as made-up words? Olika is the washing away of every redundant moment of your life. Every piece of information that's completely unnecessary. Olika swallows most days whole, and they're never to be seen again. Do you remember what you ate for lunch four days ago? Probably not. That's Olika. Do you remember brushing your teeth this morning? Maybe. Maybe not. But you certainly won't remember it tomorrow. That's Olika. Every time you've eaten a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, any uneventful workday, even most eventful workdays, they all get placed into the same folder, and that folder isn't worthwhile enough to keep from getting sent to the trash bin. All of your repetitive experience gets washed away, and all you're left with is the highlight reel of your life. That one time you went skydiving, your wedding, your trip to the Bahamas, the last time you saw your mom before she died. This is why when you're middle-aged, or even quarter-aged like me, your life seems to just have flown you by. Because odds are you've spent the last 20 years of your life in the same routine, throwing the vast majority of your memories away. This is probably a major cause of many midlife crises. Olika is why childhood memories stick with you for life. One of the reasons why childhood is so formative. Everything you experienced as a child was new. Most of it was worth saving. You might remember that simple joy of jumping on the couch when you were five, but you probably don't have two memories of that. It's also closely tied to nostalgia. Olika is a big part of the reason why so many people miss their high school or college years. High school is a memory-making machine. You're crammed into a building with hundreds of other people for years. With so many people in your life, 
It's almost guaranteed that you'll be bombarded with new life experiences. Then, when your school years are over, your life typically mellows out. You lose a lot of friends, you get a job, your days start to have a more consistent rhythm, and you have less people in your life to provide intrigue and excitement. It's the same with nostalgia for video games. The first days of playing through a game can never be repeated. You might still find enjoyment in replaying a game, but you'll never be able to live up to your nostalgia for it because it's no longer a new experience. You already know the landscape of Hyrule, so exploring it a second time is far less exciting, and far less memorable. Olika is also why vacations feel longer than they are. You look back on your two-week trip to Thailand, and it feels like it lasted months. But you look back in the last six months of work, and it feels like it was only a few weeks. That's because that whole trip to Thailand was a novelty. You spent every day in an unfamiliar environment doing unfamiliar things. Your brain was actually turned on, and it was all worth cataloging. As depressing as Olika might be, at least that's the bright side. You can combat the quickening pace of your life by interweaving your days with new experiences. If you spend a year doing the same things in the same routine, you might as well toss that year in the garbage for all your memories are concerned. You spend your life trying to say, Eureka, I found it. But instead, you end up saying, Oh, Lika, I've lost it. But if instead you make an effort to try new things and see new places over the course of that year, you may just remember it. And it may make your life feel all that much longer and fuller. Thanks for watching my video. That's all I've got to say for this one. I'll put some other videos I have up right there that you can check out. And if you enjoyed this one, feel free to like it, subscribe, whatever, uh, comment. That'd be good too. I hope this one gave you some stuff to think about. But yeah, thanks for watching. And, uh... Until next time.